All right, we're going to be taking a look at a common question in optimization that you might see in some sort of calculus one course. So the question says, a channel filled with water has the dimensions shown below, where A and B are fixed constants. Find the maximum value of theta in terms of A and B that will maximize the volume of the channel. So as you can see from the information that's given, we have a cross section that has a, has a couple dimensions labeled. It's got data, it's got A, and then we've got the actual view and the depth of it is B. And these are unknowns to us, but it doesn't matter because we can still solve the problem just pretending that we know those numbers. So if you're having a hard time visualizing this, this is kind of what it looks like. It's being filled with water and it's, we want to find the maximum dimensions because in real life, we'd want to have something that holds the most water. It's something that is getting us like the biggest bang for our buck, right? So how would we solve this problem? It's just like any other optimization problem where we want to have a constraint equation and an optimization equation. So what exactly do you think that we would be optimizing in this? And it would be the volume of the shape, right? So in order to get the volume of the shape, we would just take the face of one side, which is just this trapezoid over here, which I'm just highlighting in red. This trapezoid face, the area, times however far we're going. In this case, it would be whatever number B is. So in order to get that, you could do the area of a trapezoid, or you could break it up into two triangles and a rectangle. So let's just break it up into two triangles and a rectangle. We know that the area of this trapezoid, of the cross-sectional area, let's call that A, that's going to be equal to, well, we don't know a couple more things. So we know that we know that this here, we're going to write that as B. And you could pick anything. And then we also don't know what the height is. So let's write that as, as C. Let's do that. So now we've got an A, a B, a C, and a theta. And oh, I actually just realized this is, a, we, already, we already gave one named B, so let's call that a D. There. So we also know that this is also going to be D. And the height is going to be the same over here, which is going to be C. So we've got two triangles. And the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. In this case, we called it D times C divided by 2. And we have two of these triangles. We know that they're exactly the same because they have the same angle theta. And we know that the hypotenuse is going to be the same as well. So we're just going to multiply that by 2. And then we're adding that area of the rectangle in between. So that's just going to be A, which is the length, multiplied by the height or the width, which is going to be C. So simplifying that, we get A is equal to, these twos will cancel out, we'll get DC plus AC. So then the volume would be equal to um, exactly this area, the cross-sectional area, multiplied by the uh, however far our channel is, which is uh, the constant B. So that's going to be B multiplied by DC plus AC. So this is the equation that ultimately we will be trying to optimize. So once we can break this down a bit and get it into something that we can actually solve for in terms of theta, so then we can take the derivative of that, set it to zero, and then find the maximum. So how are we going to get this in terms of something else like theta or A and only B? We need to look at our constraint equations. So something that you might notice is that we've got a right triangle. Let me just draw out that right triangle at a much larger scale. This is our right triangle right here. We know that this is D. We know that this is C. 
this is A, and then the angle at the top here where C meets A is going to be our angle theta. So we can write a couple terms, or a couple new equations, just from our trigonometric relationships. So let's do, let's do sine of theta. That is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be D over A. Or we know that A sine theta will be equal to D. There's one. We also know cos theta. Well, cos theta is going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be C over A. C over A. So now we also know that A times cos of theta is going to be equal to C. So let's try subbing these equations into our uh, optimization, optimization equation and see where that gets us. So we can rewrite that as the, the volume of our channel, V. It's going to be equal to B multiplied by, and then we've got D, which is A sine theta. A sine theta multiplied by C plus A times C. A time, oh, and you know, sorry, I actually missed a C. So let's get rid of that C and let's sub in A times cos theta. A cos theta plus, and now we've got A times, and then C is uh, also A, so that's gonna become A squared. And then this is cos theta. Great, let's simplify that a little bit more. So now we've got, uh, let's multiply everything in. This B times A, uh, that's gonna be an A squared, multiplying those two together, and then we've got a sine theta, and then we've got one more cos theta in that first term. That's multiplied by, and then we've got an A squared multiplied by B, and then we've got a single cos theta there. So we've got a common factor, or we've got a common term in both of these, which is b times a squared. So we can factor that out. So that leaves us with, let's rewrite that as a squared times b, multiplied by sine theta cos theta plus cos theta. Great. So now we've got something that's in terms of a and b, and that's what we wanted. We're trying to maximize the value of theta, so we want to take the derivative with respect to theta. And since we, it says in the question that we're allowed to leave our answer in terms of a and b. So it looks like everything we can do is okay right now. And when we take the derivative, we just have to treat a and b like they're normal numbers. We just don't know them in this case. So let's give us a bit more room. <clears throat> so we're gonna take the derivative of v, so dv over d theta, which just means the derivative of the volume with respect to theta. And we know that if a squared times b, if those are just constants, then we can just pull those out and apply the derivative to the inside, which is sine theta cos theta plus cos theta. We also know that we can just simply take the derivative of that first term, sine theta cos theta, and then add the derivative of cos theta. And that's gonna be what the derivative is of this entire function. So we know that we've got an a squared times b on the outside. And then how do we take the derivative of sine theta times cos theta? Well, that's gonna be the product rule. So it's gonna be f prime, let's call this guy f, let's call this guy g. It's gonna be f prime, which is cos theta times g which is cos theta as well, plus g prime, which is derivative of cos theta is negative sine theta, g prime times f, and that's gonna be sine theta. And then we're gonna add the derivative of that second term there, which is cos theta. The derivative of cos theta, again, negative sine theta. 
Great. So we've got that. We can simplify that a little bit more. And we've got a squared times b. This will become cos squared theta minus, this will be sine squared theta. This will be minus sine theta. So now we've got this, and we're going to be setting that derivative equal to zero because once we solve this for theta, we're going to be looking for the maximum. And that happens when we set a derivative equal to zero. So how are we going to solve this? We've got cos squared theta minus sine squared theta minus sine theta. It's not very intuitive looking at that, how we're going to solve it. But a trick that usually works in most cases, I would say, is that you want to somehow get all of your trig functions in terms of sine theta or cos theta. So looking at this, I've got a sine squared theta and I've got a sine theta. So I'm going to try to get rid of the cos squared theta and make it into sine squared theta somehow. So we can just remember a very simple identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. This one always comes in handy for uh, little tricks like this. And like, it's always thrown into little questions on like exams or quizzes because it's easy to forget and get stumped when you get to this step. But sometimes making like a really simple substitution, it will actually make the question a whole lot easier. So cos squared theta, if we rearrange, we know that cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. So let's do zero is equal to, and since we are factoring this, we're just going to be take, we're just going to be setting the inside of here equal to zero. The a squared and b doesn't actually matter. So cos squared theta, we just said that that is going to be actually just one minus sine square of theta. And that's going to be minus another sine squared theta minus one sine theta. Simplifying this a little bit more, we get one minus two sine squared theta minus sine of theta. And if it hasn't popped out to you yet, we can make a simple substitution here uh, or not, and it's going to be a quadratic. So I like making a substitution because I think it's a little bit easier to read, but by all means, you could just jump ahead and factor this um, in terms of sine theta. So let's do a little substitution. We're gonna let we're gonna let capital A be equal to sine theta. And I'm gonna rearrange it because I like being able to read my work a bit more. It's gonna be minus two a squared minus a plus one. And now we can factor this and solve for a. You can use the quadratic formula, or you can do what's something that's going to add add to negative one and multiply to negative two. That's going to be negative two and positive one. So we've got zero is equal to minus two a squared minus two a plus a plus one. From this, we're going to factor out a minus two, uh, a minus two a, sorry. And we've got a minus or a plus one, sorry. And then we've got from this term, we can do plus one and then a plus one. Finally, we can solve this and we get minus two a plus one and then a plus one we can factor out. Great. So now we've got something like this and we'll do, if we set both of these equal to zero, we can get a is equal to minus one from that and that's from the second guy. And then we've got um, setting negative two a plus one equal to zero. We have got um, two a is equal to one or a is equal to a half. So then we've got sine theta equals a negative one, and we've got sine theta is equal to 
Aha. So we've got two answers here. So we're going to take a look at our unit circle and we're going to see which answers actually make sense in the application of the question, right? So sine theta, when that is negative one, the value of theta, the only value of theta in the unit circle is going to be three pi on two. So let's look at our question. We've got a value of three pi on two. That would mean that this angle right here, theta, that would have to go all the way around. That's pi, three pi on two, right? And that just doesn't make sense in this application. So we have to keep in mind that there are some restrictions on the domain of theta for our answers that are actually going to make sense. So we know that that's not going to be a possible answer. So we're just going to disregard this one. But we've got sine theta is equal to half. When is sine theta equal to a half? And from our unit circle, we know that theta is equal to half when pi, or sorry, when theta is equal to pi over six. So let's look at our question, pi over six. If we were to draw out our trapezoid, we know that pi on six is going to be a totally acceptable answer of theta. This definitely could be equal to pi on six because it still maintains that shape of the channel and it would still be able to hold water as expected. So that is our final answer. It turns out that no matter the depth B or no matter what the value of A is, no matter what those numbers are, the maximum value of theta that will, um, sorry, the value of theta that will maximize the volume of the channel is actually always going to be pi over six. And if you wanted to further verify that this is indeed a maximum, then you could also take the second derivative of our volume function and you could find the value at theta is equal to pi over six. And if that value is gonna be a negative number, you know that the function uh, for volume will be concave down, which indeed confirms that it is going to be a maximum on the function for volume. So that's all I have for the question. If you have any more uh, concerns or further questions about the problem, feel free to message me or email me. Uh, my email will be in the description of this video and I'd be happy to help you guys with some more problems.